Now, ever since the very end of the Star Wars sequel trilogy movies, a lot of Star Wars fans have been really kind of growing more towards the Star Wars TV shows like Mandalorian Season 1 and 2, and of course, other shows that are bound to be released in 2023 like the Ahsoka Tano series, Amando 3, and a whole lot more on the horizon as well. This is Mike Zero. Make sure to subscribe if you are new to the channel for future Star Wars updates. Also, by the way, guys, make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support. It is greatly appreciated. Now, one thing that Bob Iger, the Disney CEO, has been creating and, you know, creating this major strategy for the future of Star Wars through the roadmap that they're creating to really kind of enhance the experience is that he is creating a plan to focus more so on movies again, rather strictly than just TV shows. So that's kind of becoming a new thing now under Bob Iger's leadership. He wants to go back to the movies, getting Star Wars back into the theaters that gains more revenue because of repeat ticket sales and stuff around those lines. So they're not getting rid of TV shows entirely. That's not the plan. However, on top of this, they also have a lot of other things in the works, such as changing a lot of aspects of the sequel trilogy movies and ending certain things about them. So let's tap right into this. Now, the thing that John and Dave are actually up to right now is that John Favreau and Dave Filoni are trying to establish new types of Star Wars lore that's either inspired from legends and or inspired from unapproved material from the 1990s that never made it to the books or the comics. So that in and of itself will also be treated as new material as well for the upcoming canon. Now on top of this too, what's even all the more intriguing is exactly what's going on, is that with Disney currently creating new plans and attempts to fix the Star Wars franchise, they currently have both Favreau and Filoni working on many remedies for the faults in the sequel trilogy movies, and that Bob Iger is going all out with breaking the current sequel trilogy canon for those movies in order to create new meaning for many of the characters in certain stories. Disney CEO Bob Iger recently made a statement by saying the following to the community. It is, it is in our best interest for what John and Dave have to offer in order to expand the galaxy far, far away. And sometimes that means revising some of our story decisions for our past projects, such as the most recent episodes that we put out into theaters over the course of the last couple of years. This is a decision that we felt was necessary in order to expand what fans like to call lore properly. We realized that the sequels have received high criticism and we are now looking for a path to better that perception from our fan base. Now let me just pause here for a second. Now, this has been something long in the making by Favreau and Filoni by righting the wrongs of the sequel trilogy using different scenarios. And we're going to tap into that in a minute. The thing that Bob Iger is putting out right now is that, call it desperation, call it damage control, whatever it may be, they really are absolutely trying to change the sequel trilogy lore and break the current canon in the sequel trilogy movies to actually introduce some wider and more accepted material that's going to be introduced in the Mandoverse and in other Star Wars TV shows as well. So we already know that Favreau and Filoni are working around the clock to make this all possible through the world between worlds and the wills who by the way are godlike beings, we'll tap into that in just a second, but the thing about this too is that John and Dave have a strict plan, and they're sticking to it, is that they want to make sure that they can create that fun feeling in the franchise again. That real fun feeling that the fans had with the originals and the prequels, and even, let's say, the build-up to The Last Jedi. They want to create that fun again with Star Wars, both for TV shows and for movies. So with that being said and all, moving past all of this, Bob Iger putting it out there that they do actually realize that there is a lot of criticism. They're not holding that back anymore. They're not masking it as something else. They are finally admitting that, yes, they do realize that there's a lot of criticism toward the sequel trilogy films, and they're totally aware of that, and they're trying to find ways to create a remedy to really kind of alter fans' views of those three movies that caused so much criticism. Moving on. 
Now, apart from what Bob Iger stated, this all alludes to Favreau and Filoni completely changing Rey's bloodline and her name, the story of Rey's parents, and even how many retcons will be born in the upcoming Mandalorian seasons that will greatly impact the sequels. Some of it is said to have something to do with the world between worlds and the circle of the wills, which is the order of the godlike creatures that created the entire galaxy that will become canon very soon by next year. These changes are said to also greatly impact some of the decisions that Luke Skywalker makes in his lifetime. Now, I want to pause here quick for a second too, is that everything related to Bob Iger putting this out there, confirming that John and Dave are in the process of creating these major retcons, changing elements of the sequels, breaking canon in the sequels, and rebuilding something new, I am not quite sure how great of an impact it will have on the fans. It is a very interesting discussion, you know, like, questions like, will this even change fans' minds? Will this even make fans more happy about the Star Wars franchise? Well, if they play their cards right, and if they play them correctly and smoothly, I think that it could. I think that they do have a potential there of changing fans' hearts and their mindset toward the sequel trilogy movies if, and only if, it's going to be powerful enough. It's, if it's going to feel cheap and rushed and just shoehorned, it's not going to work. And that's exactly why John and Dave are taking a lot of time on these retcons. You know, some of these retcons, by the way, won't be implemented until at least 2024. So there's a lot of things happening at once. And given that John is hiring new creatives to come on board, in fact, he is hiring Peyton Reed, the director of Mando Season 2's finale, to become a big part of other Star Wars shows out there. So I think it's great that Disney is not only acknowledging the criticism, but they're also breaking some canon in the sequels to build something new up. Some of you guys out there may not like this, some of you guys out there may love this, and that's fine. But, at the end of the day, when you look at a scenario like this, it's almost like it comes off as, yes, damage control, let's be honest, it does. But at the same exact time, when it's John and Dave, they will find an avenue or a pathway to making it a passionate piece of work of their own. And I think that's where it's really going to feel natural and authentic to the fans once all of these changes are made and once they will be either referenced or mentioned or even acted in as in upcoming Star Wars shows that's going to alter our perception of the sequels. I mean, look at what they're doing with Ahsoka already. There's a lot of World Between Worlds stuff in there that's going to greatly impact certain eras of the Star Wars franchise. So, anyways, with that being all done and said, I would really love to hear what each and every one of you guys out there have to say about this below in the comments. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support, and I'll catch you guys next time.